Hi everyone, I'm Alice and today we're going to be talking a little bit about slopes and going over a little bit about graphs to give you the background information on that. If you're interested in private tutoring, I do offer that. More information in the description and down below. What we're going to start off with is looking at the graph that we have here. So this is classically what you'll see as the x-axis and the y-axis. And what I want to point out is that the horizontal line is labeled x and the vertical line is labeled y. So when you look at this, any point that you have on here is really defined by the distance they are from that very center cross where it would be zero and zero. So as we look at each of the axes, you can see if we first look at the x-axis, which is the horizontal one, as we go towards the right, we're going to see numbers that are positive and they get higher and higher as you continue going right. On the left, you can see that those are the negative numbers, so they go continuously negative, and you can see it starts from negative 1, and it kind of increases in negative. That is also the same as a number line, so you can kind of think about it as a number line as well. The other thing to point out is the y-axis, which is totally vertical here. So along that axis, you can see that the x value is going to be zero because you're not going any distance away from the zero on the horizontal line. As you go up towards the top, you can see the y values are positive, and as you go down, the y values are negative. So keep that in mind. To the top and to the right, you're gonna have positive, and to the left and to the bottom, those will be negative numbers. I also have here written x, y in parentheses on the top right. x and y are usually how you define a specific point or specific dot on the graph. So because x comes before y, you will always see the distance, the point is on the line written first, so that will be the x value, and then the y value, the height, wherever it is, is going to be after the comma. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how graphs work. And a really important concept for those graphs is talking about slope. So in essence, it's the steepness of a line. It measures how steep a line is on the graph. One thing that you will see a lot as well is this equation, y equals mx plus b. Now, what this represents is an actual line because once you know the x value or the y value, you can find the other value. Here with m and b, those will be constants, which means that those will be actual numbers and they don't change depending on where you are on the graph. When you have y equals mx plus b, m is going to represent the slope. If you have an equation that has an x and y, but it's written a little bit differently, it might be x plus y equals 10, for example, and the y is not isolated on the left side like we have here, what you want to do is move those values around so that you have something that looks like y equals mx plus b. Now, two things to note is in general, just by looking at what the line looks like, you can tell if the slope is going to be positive or negative. So I have here the line that looks like this. It goes from the top right to the bottom left. That will give you a positive slope. And on the other side, if you have from the top left to the bottom right, that will give you a negative slope. So in general, you don't have to know exactly what the slope is, but just by looking at that, you can tell if it's going to be positive or negative. And we'll go over specifically how to calculate slope as we go along. 
So when you're going to actually figure out what the slope is and how it works, what you want to remember is that slope represents rise over run. That's a mnemonic, which means it's kind of a, an easy way to remember how it works. It's rise, meaning the change in the Y, and then you divide that over the run, which is the change in the X. So as we see, if you have two points, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say the first point is X1 and Y1, the second point is x2 and y2. We want to find the slope, meaning we want to find the change in y and divide that by the change in x. And what we have, how we actually do that, is by subtracting each of the y values and divide that by the difference of the two x values. So make sure that you remember this formula and that you understand what that represents. So right here, the y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And here, because of how negatives work and how fractions work, it really doesn't matter which point is x1, y1, and which point is x2, y2. The only thing that matters is when you're doing that subtraction that the points are in the right place. If you're doing y2 minus y1, you want to make sure that in the denominator, in the bottom, x2 comes first and you subtract y1 from that. Either way, you want to remember y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In other words, change in X over change in Y. To really help solidify that, hopefully this example can give you a really good idea of that. So we have two points that I've drawn here on the graph. I've labeled the first one point A, and you can see where it's located is one comma two. So that means that it is one unit to the right on the horizontal line. So you go to the right one and then you go up two units. So if you go to the right one unit and up two units, the point is going to be one, two. And the same idea goes for point B here. The only difference is that we are going left. So the X value is negative three because we've gone to the left three points and then negative four because for the Y value, we're going below the line four units. So we have these two points and what we want to do is look for the slope between them. And here I've just drawn the line so that you get an idea of what it looks like. One thing to note as well is because you go from the bottom left to the top right, you're going to get a positive slope. And you'll see that as we actually do the calculation. What we want to do is plug in the numbers to our equation here. What we'll say is that point A is x2, y2. So we'll plug the 2 into y2 because it's the y value. And then we'll plug the 1 into the x2 because that's the x value. What we'll do with the B is we'll make that x1, y1. So negative 4 will go into y1 and then negative three will go into the x1. So what we're left with is two minus a negative four, and that will be over one minus a negative three. What you want to remember from arithmetic is that if you have two negative signs together, you can combine those together to make a positive sign. So essentially, that's two plus four, over 1 plus 3. As you combine all of those two together, you can see that's 6 over 4. And if you reduce that, that'll be 3 over 2. So what we're left with is 3 over 2, which is the m value or the slope as we've mentioned before. What that means is that as we go along this line, 
you can see that m equals 3 over 2, or the rise over the run. For every 3 units that we go up, we will go to the right 2 units. And that's because we're rising 3, so we can go from negative 4 from point B to negative 1. And then we will go to the right two units because that's the change in the x. So we'll go from the negative three for the x value of b, we'll go to the right two because that's the change in the x, that's the run. So that ends up being negative one. So as you can see on this line, the other point that we have here is negative one, negative one. And as we go from there to point A, again, we rise three units and we run two units to the right. Now, if you have any negative numbers, that just means you go to the left or you go down. And that will give you a line that goes in the opposite direction. But Hopefully this makes a lot of sense. Feel free to pause and work your way through it and make sure that you really understand how slope works. An example of a question that you might actually see on the GRE is this. So this says, what is the slope of a line that passes through the points negative four, five, and one, two? So what we have here is two points. We can say that the first point, negative four, five, is going to be our point one, and then the one, two is gonna be our point two. So remember the equation that we had, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That is the change in the x over the change in the y, and we can just plug in the numbers here. So what we have is the two y values, five minus two, and we'll divide by the two x values. So we have negative four minus one. If you simplify all of that, you will get a negative five thirds. And so the answer to this is going to be A. So this is a simple calculator slope given two points. Just to make sure that I recap everything, slope can be remembered as the rise over run, the change in y over the change in x. And when you actually have two points, you can remember that you find that by subtracting y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Now, there are a lot of different ways to test slope and to test your understanding of this. I do have another video on comparison questions specifically addressing slope. And once that's uploaded, I will have that in the cards here for you to check out. But otherwise, I do want to thank you and give you a bit of information about my private GRE tutoring that I do offer. So it is really flexible based on what you want and what you feel like you need. So if you only want to work on one writing, verbal, or quant section, or you want to work on all three, totally up to you. I do customized study plans and sample agendas with questions, resources, content review, all of the like. You'll find out all of my strategies and all of the wisdom that I've gotten working with a lot of students and creating all of these videos. I offer flexible scheduling and payment. And as you can see here, one of my students said that I was very personable and my tutoring sessions were very productive and professional. So if you're interested, do contact me with the information down below. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day.